Let's talk about Backyard Chickens, a strategic deck building game about running a chicken farm. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald. In this episode, we're going to talk about a deck building game that's all about running a chicken farm. It's a game called Backyard Chickens by August Games. Now, this is a game for between two and five players. You can play it, well, it says in the box age 14 and up, but I think younger kids, especially if they're familiar with deck builders, can figure this one out. Games take only half an hour to an hour to play. Let's take a deeper look at Backyard Chickens by August Games. Backyard Chickens is a game that was sent to me by uh, the, the designer of the, well, actually, it was hand-delivered while, while I was at the breakout game convention in Toronto. But uh, this is a light game, I would say, on the maybe on the heavier sort of end of light, but it's a game that I think is accessible enough that even folks who aren't super familiar with deck building games can figure this one out. What you're trying to do in this game, you're going to win by earning the most points. And once one player makes it to 10 points, that's going to trigger the end of the game. And then everyone's going to count up their points to see who has the most. And if there is a tie, then that's going to be broken by the number of eggs that your chickens can produce. You earn those victory points by selling eggs at the market and by making sure that you've got lots of happy chickens in your chicken coop. How do you play this game though? Well, you're gonna start the game. Well, the advanced game has these event cards. So in, in the basic version, you don't use these events. These are just cards that are going to complicate the round for everyone. Maybe they'll provide a bonus or maybe they'll make things more difficult. So you might get a card like Super Layers and that's gonna get you some extra eggs. You might wind up having to discard cards from your hand. So there's lots of different events that can affect your turn. Then you're going to collect the eggs from the chickens that are in your chicken coop. So each of these chickens has some egg production. If the chicken is sad, it's gonna produce fewer eggs. Why would a chicken be sad? Because it's hungry. If you don't feed it, it's gonna be sad. If you give a chicken a special treat, it's going to be happy, and that's gonna produce lots of eggs and extra victory points at the end of the game. So making sure that your chickens are fed and watered and happy is very important here. And what's interesting, I think, about this game, like I said, it's a deck builder, but you're also buying the cards that are going to earn you the currency, which is eggs, and the points at the end of the game, but these cards cost something in upkeep, so you've really got to find a balance here when you're playing through Backyard Chickens. Once everyone's collected their eggs, you can do that simultaneously, then you can mature those chickens. And that just means if you've bought a chicken on a previous turn, he's going to be face down in your chicken coop. And then to mature the chick, you just flip that card over. Now what's interesting here is that you're, you don't get the eggs from that chicken on the first turn because it's too little, but you still have to feed and water that chicken. So once you've bought the chicken, it's going to take a couple of turns before really that's feeding anything into your engine. Instead, it's sucking resources away. This is a deck building game. So you're going to start the game with a, a deck of 10 cards. You're going to have five water dishes. That'll give you one water for your chickens each. You're going to have five cards that say yard scraps on them. That's the food that you feed those chickens. And you start with two very basic chickens in your chicken coop. So you're not gonna get very many eggs at the beginning, but you're going to use those eggs to buy some cards that upgrade your deck. You do start with those 10 cards. You've got a hand size of six, so you drop those six cards, and then you start making sure that you can feed those chickens. Feeding and watering the chickens is pretty simple at the beginning of the game because you've only got two chickens when you first start, and you've, you've got five water cards and five food cards, so chances are you'll have enough to at least get water to these chickens. If a chicken is left thirsty, if you don't have enough water, if you wind up with only food cards in your hand, they're going to produce two fewer eggs on the next turn. But it does become quite interesting if you're not able to feed the chickens. So chickens start out face up like this and they're content, but they're gonna be sad if you don't feed them. Then you turn them sideways. Now all of a sudden you're producing fewer eggs, you're not earning victory points. If a sad chicken goes hungry, it's going to run away from your chicken coop. Then it turns upside down and you lose victory points. You don't get any eggs for that. So you wanna make sure that you've got enough food and water for those chickens. 
So drawing up your hand of cards, feeding your chickens, collecting the eggs, all of those things are done simultaneously. And then you go to the market and that's where player order comes in. You're going to buy cards from the market uh, one player at a time. Obviously, you're not all grabbing those cards all at once. So that's, that's the drafting portion of the game, but you have to pay for those cards. So you might be able to get some special treats for your chicks. You might be able to get a water feeder, that's a card that's going to give them more water. You might be able to get something that gives them more food. And then there are lots of special little things that can make your chickens happier. Usually it's trying to make them happy or making sure that they're fed making sure that they have enough water. Now you can also buy chickens. It costs three eggs to buy a chicken unless some special event makes them more expensive. But you've got to be careful about buying those chickens, especially at the start of the game when you don't have very powerful or, or very much food and water that you can give those chickens at the beginning. So when you go to the market, as I said, in player order, you can buy things for your chicken coop. You can buy chickens. You can spend eggs to clear the row and draw new cards if there's nothing that you want that turn. You can also do the same thing with the chickens. One of the other kind of nice wrinkles I, that I quite like about this game is that you can also spend eggs. Well, you can sell your eggs to, to buy a victory point, but you can also uh, spend three eggs to trash a card from your discard pile which really allows you to create an efficient deck. And that is a kind of a more advanced uh, deck building skill that you're, you're developing when you play these games. Often you need a special card to trash a card from your deck. You wind up collecting more and more and your deck becomes less efficient. But you can really get an engine that hums in this game if you have enough eggs that you can start trashing those cards that you don't want to draw. Once all the players have been to the market and they've spent whatever eggs they want to spend or saved whatever eggs they want to save, I should mention that you can actually save water cards. There's a water supply here at the top. So if you have extra water cards, you don't want to waste those, you want to hang on to them, those can go at the, at the top of your player board. Uh, and then you check for victory. You check to see if anybody's reached 10 points through that combination of selling eggs and having the victory points from the chickens. Once you get to 10 points, it's the end of the game. You're going to count up and see who has the most victory points. Now, what skills are you working on when you play a game like Backyard Chickens? Well, this is a game where you do have to budget, of course, your eggs and your cards. You have to make some decisions about buying things for your farm at the marketplace or buying more chickens. And those, when you're planning and you're budgeting, those are examples of executive functioning skills. Those are the skills and behaviors that you need to work towards a goal. And in this case, of course, the goal is winning the game by getting those 10 points. So there's budgeting and planning. And there's a really great balance here, I think, because some of those chickens that you might want to buy that will give you lots of eggs and lots of victory points, eggs are the currency that you need but you have to feed those chickens. And some of those more powerful or, or chickens that lay more eggs, they need more food. So you might have to spend three food to feed a chicken or two food to feed. So you're really balancing out the resources that you have from the, the cards you'll draw and the resources that you're going to have to spend on those chickens. So I think that's a good balance. You've got a lot of things to juggle there. So there, there are some working memory demands as well. Working memory being the whiteboard in your mind where you keep information so that you can work with it in some way. So there's some working memory component, but there's also the memory involved when we're talking about trashing those cards. You need to remember and think of all of the resources that your animals need. You can only trash cards from your discard pile, so you still have to remember the other cards that you've bought along the way that are still in your deck. What cards are you going to trash? So there is a memory component there. You've got to think about your goal. You've got to think about what cards you have left. You don't want to get rid of the wrong thing. Usually when we played the, the cards we were trashing, at the beginning at least, were water cards because we found we were always short of food, but water was usually pretty easy. You know, and the impact of not having enough water is just you lose two eggs. You're not going to have lose victory points where chickens are running away. But... You can also store water from one turn to the next. So that that made it more likely that we were going to sell our water cards once we bought, you know, some better watering cans or something like that that we could feed our chickens with. 
You've also got various chicken breeds here. So there's a little bit of factual knowledge, maybe. You're thinking about the fact that, well, if you have a farm, you need to make sure you feed your animals and you give them enough water to drink. But there are different breeds of chickens here as well, and they have the names of those various breeds. So if that's something that you're interested in learning about, that certainly you could do some research on. Uh, you know, I've seen these other kinds of chickens. I've never seen in, I've seen pictures, but I've never seen in, in real life these guys with the big feathery ball on their head so uh, that was interesting an interesting part of the game as well final thoughts though about backyard chickens this is a deck builder that i think is accessible but there's still lots of strategy here because of that balancing act between the cards that are going to give you your currency and the resources that you need to feed those cards sometimes you might find yourself trying to decide okay well which chicken should i feed i don't have enough food for all of them which should i feed and which will go hungry that that's going to make them sad next turn i'm going to get fewer eggs if the end game comes i'm going to get fewer victory points so it is a, a really i think a clever balance so it's accessible enough you know maybe like i said for 12 or 13 year olds to play but at the same time it's strategic enough that i know fans of deck builders said this is I, they were surprised actually by the fact that there's some strategy here to be had and they did like the idea that you if you can spend those 3 eggs you're going to make your deck more efficient and that's that's a key uh, element of deck builders the card art is a lot of fun too. I, I like the art on the box. I like the pictures of those chickens. I think my favorite one is the event deck that has these chickens chasing after each other. It's like Chicken Run or something. So the cartoon style chicken art is fun as well. But are there, are there downsides to this game? There was one that did, one downside that came up was actually the player board itself. This idea that you've got these little cardboard egg tokens but you've got baskets that, so if you start to run out, you can move, oh, this is worth three eggs now. Oh, this one's worth five. You know, it's possible those might get moved around by accident. It's possible that, you know, an unscrupulous player might kind of nudge one from three to five or from one to three to give them some, some extra eggs to spend if they, if they don't care about following the rules and winning fairly. Uh, but th that was sort of the, the only real complaint that we got from any of the players around the table. Um, the other thing, I suppose, is that, you know, it's, these tokens aren't very much fun. You've got just these little round eggs uh, we actually, once we played through the game once, uh, we actually <laughs> dug out some wooden eggs from another bird theme game that I have on the shelf here behind me. So we used wooden eggs instead. That allowed us to really see easily how many eggs the other players uh, had stashed in their little baskets. So uh, we never ran out of eggs. That wasn't an issue. And I think wooden eggs are more fun than the little cardboard ones. But of course, you know me and those deluxe components. I'm all about those deluxe game components. But that in a nutshell is Backyard Chicken. Thanks so much to the folks at August Games for sending this game my way. We did have a lot of fun playing Backyard Chickens. So and we will play it again. Uh, you know, as soon as somebody wants to pull out a deck builder, this will be at the top of the list, I think. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can, of course, leave them in the comment section below the video. Or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go. And the previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the X handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed. So we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time.